In this video, I'm going to be building out the battleship game, but I'm not going to be doing it on my own. I have help from both Ania and Jesse to build this out, and Ania tackled all of the game logic in her video, which I'll link in the description below, and then Jesse took that and made it all entirely multiplayer, and I'll link that video in the description down below. And now in our part, we're going to take all the work that they've done and make it look aesthetically pleasing by doing a bunch of custom CSS to the page and a little bit of tweaks to the JavaScript. So it's going to look just like this. And if you just want to follow along with this video before watching the other videos, you can use the link in the description below to get the source code that starts at the very end of Jesse's video. So you can follow along with the exact code that I'm using if you don't want to go through the entire other process of watching their videos. But I highly recommend you check out their videos because they have amazing content. And on top of that, you can actually play this game right now by going to battleship.tech. And speaking of .tech, today's sponsor is .tech Domains. Have you ever had an awesome idea for a project, and as soon as you try to go buy a domain name for it, you realize literally every single good domain name is taken? Well, luckily for you, .tech Domains, today's video sponsor, has got you covered because they have tons of available domain names that are short, and memorable, which is exactly what you need in a domain name. And they also end in .tech, and it really gives you extra authority in that technology space. I mean, tons of people are using .tech domains. CES, for example, switched over to using .tech. Westboss has a uses.tech domain name, and .tech is just all over the place. I even got the domain name battleship.tech, which I could have never gotten if I was trying to do a .com or .org. So if you're looking to get a domain name, use go.tech slash WDS linked in the description and then use the code WDS.tech and you're going to get 80% off of a one year or a five year domain name, which is just incredibly cheap. So I highly recommend you go check that out now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started, I just have the code from Jesse's video opened up. No changes have been made, so it's exactly as he left it. And on the right hand side here, I have the Google fonts open because we're going to be using some custom fonts with this design. We're going to be using this bangers font, which is this interesting looking bold font you can see down here. If I just exit out of this, you can see that really nice big bold font. And then also we're going to be using this font Montserrat, which is just this nice light kind of font for all of the different body text. And that is going to make a huge difference to our site, just adding these basic fonts. So if we just come to embed here, we can just copy out this link here. And that allows us, if we go into our index file here, and we just paste this link in, this is just importing that font into our actual file. And now if we go into our CSS, we can actually set our body to have this font. So we can just say body, font, family, and we can just copy this font family here, which is the Montserrat. We want that to be our body font. And now all we need to do is get our application up and running. So we need to install our dependencies. We can just run npm i, and that's going to install all of the dependencies if you haven't already installed them yet. And then after that's done installing, the next thing we need to do is run a command called npm run dev. As you can see, that's going to set up our node mon server and allow us to automatically refresh our page. So as soon as this is finished, we can run npm run dev, and that's going to start up our server on port 3000. And if we just go to localhost 3000, as you can see, what they have built so far is definitely not the most aesthetically pleasing, and that's because they're purely focusing on the functionality. So it's our turn to take this and actually make it look good. And the first thing that I want to do is to build in a custom splash page, because we've already got this nice looking font, which is great. But one problem with this is you have to select single player or multiplayer up here, and it's kind of confusing and doesn't really work all that great. So what we want to do is create a splash page that just gives us the option to select single player, or multiplayer, and that's it. So let's create a new file here. And we're just gonna call this, actually, instead of creating a new file, let's rename this current file here to be singleplayer.html. We're gonna create a new file, which we're gonna call index.html. And this index.html is gonna be our splash page. So if we just copy everything from single player into here, and what we wanna do, if we just expand this, make it a little bit easier to read, we want to get rid of a lot of stuff. We can first get rid of our socket.io and our app.js. We don't need any JavaScript on this page. We can also get rid of all this information down here for our containers and such. Let's just delete all of that out. That's just all of our grid information. We should just be left with these two different buttons. And if we save and refresh, we now just have the single player and the multiplayer button. And we don't even need IDs on these. So we can get rid of those IDs. 
And now we just have those two buttons. Let me just zoom that in a little bit. So my idea and vision for this page is I want to have essentially a giant kind of centered splash screen that has the title Battleships, which is gonna use that cool fancy font that we have over here, this bangers font. We're gonna use this fancy font here with this cool bold text for our nice title that says Battleships. And then we're gonna have our two buttons. And then I kind of want to have like a watermark of a big battleship in the background to really emphasize the point that this is a battleship game. So inside of our body, the first thing I want to do is create a container that's going to contain our title as well as our buttons. So we're going to give it a class here of splash container, since this is just the container for our splash screen. We're going to have an H1, and this is going to be for our title battleship. And we also want to give this a class so that we can, you know, give it the correct font that we want because we want to use our bangers font. So we'll just say splash title. And then we're going to have our two buttons inside of that. But instead of using buttons, I actually want to use a tags because these are just going to be links. And these links are going to go to our different pages, single player and multiplayer. So let's set our href here. And our href is going to be just slash single player dot HTML. Make sure I spell that properly. There we go. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our multiplayer. And this is just going to say multiplayer.html. Now, if we save, refresh this over here, you can see we have our title as well as our two different links for single player and multiplayer. And I also want to just wrap this inside of a div. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be using some display flex to lay things out with our splash container. So we want to make sure that these show up side by side instead of, you know, on top of each other. So putting them in a div like this is going to enable us to do that. And then finally, I'm going to want to have an image tag down here for that watermark that I talked about. So let's just close this image tag off. And we want to make sure that we give it a class. And this class is just going to be splash battleship image. And then we also need to give this a source. And what I'm going to use is a SVG. You can find this SVG in the GitHub linked in the description. I'm just going to copy it over. So we're just going to create a new folder called images. And inside of here, I'm just going to paste this SVG file. Again, you can find this in the GitHub linked below, so you can follow along exactly, or you can use your own battleship image. It really doesn't matter. So our source for this, if I spell source properly, is going to be slash images slash battleship. Oops, battleship dash large dot SVG. And now if I save that, refresh our page, you can see we get this battleship image showing up. If I zoom out really far, it's a quite big image, but we'll scale that down inside the CSS. Let's zoom this back in. Now we can actually start working on our CSS styles for this splash container. So let's come in here and we're just going to put a bunch of space in between the current styles and our new styles because we're going to be deleting a lot of these older styles. So we're going to have our splash container. That's just the container that contains this top section here. And like I said, I wanted to do something that's display flex for this. So we could change this to display flex and the flex direction to column. And that's not going to really change much when we refresh. You can see it's going to pretty much look exactly the same as it did before. But what this allows us to do is actually line our items up properly on our page. So we can say we want to justify our content in the center and also align our items, whoops, items in the center. And now if we refresh over here, you can see it's going to center our objects on the screen, which is exactly what we want. And instead of having this at the very top of our page, I actually want to have it kind of more downwards a little bit inside of our page. So the next thing I'm going to do is set our height to 66 VH. And if I refresh over here, essentially what that's allowing us to do is push our content down. So it kind of appears a little bit in the top half of our screen. It's not completely dead centered, but it's still a little bit more centered at our page. It kind of shows up towards the top and that's going to give us room to put the battleship down here, which is exactly what we want. Now, the next thing to work on is going to be our bangers font. And if you look over in the embed here, our font family, we can just copy this over. So for our splash title, we can just set the font family to this bangers font and then cursive as our fallback. And we're going to set the font size here to be 10 REM. We want it to be a really big font. If we look over here. You can see we now have this nice and big font. And I can zoom this back out to a more normal zoom level. Now, before I get going too much further, one thing that I love to do on all of my different projects is to select the everything selector, the before attribute, whoops, make sure that's two colons, and the after attribute here. And all I want to do with this is I just want to set this to be box sizing, oops, box sizing of border box. And this is just going to make sizing our elements easier. And I'm actually just going to move our font family definition in here because everything is going to have this font family unless I specify otherwise. And in our body, let's just remove our margin. 
And we're gonna set a nice background color that's not quite 100% white, it's gonna be a little bit off. We're just gonna use F3, repeat it a few times. So F3, F3, F3. And it's gonna give us a really off white kind of creamy looking color, which I think will look really good. And then lastly, we're gonna take overflow on our X direction, and we're just gonna hide that. That's gonna get rid of this scroll bar here if our battleship overflows. And if we refresh, you can now see we no longer have that horizontal scroll bar, which is exactly what we want. And we have this nice little off-white background color. Now the next thing to work on is styling these different links. And what I want to do is just add a class to these links. So we'll say class of button and class of button, just like that. And now inside of our styles, we can select the buttons. So I can say dot button. And inside of here, I just want to set up a basic button. So we're going to do a background color of HSL. We're going to use 30. That's going to give us kind of an orange hue. 100% and 50%. This is going to give us this nice orange color. If we refresh, you can see that nice orange color showing up. Next, what I want to do is just add in some padding. So we'll say 0.5 EM and 1 EM. And you'll notice that's going to look a little nicer, but our text is quite small. So I'm going to add some additional classes on here of splash button. We're going to put this on both multiplayer and our single player button, just like that. And now we can select dot splash button. And I just want to increase that font size to 2REM. And if I refresh, it should be a lot easier to see what's going on. Also, let's space out these buttons a little. So we'll say margin on the left is going to be 2REM. And then I want to select our splash button first child. And I want to get rid of that margin on the left. So we'll set it back to zero. That just makes sure that we don't have any additional margin on the left side of this button and only on our second button. So now they're spaced out, which is exactly what we want. We can go back to styling our actual button. So since this button class is going to apply both the links and buttons, I want to make sure I take care of button actual things. So like outline should be none, border should be none. Those are things that are handled by the button. But also I want to make the text decoration none as well, because that's going to get rid of the underline for our A tags, as you can see here. Now the next thing is going to be our cursor. We're going to want to make sure this is a pointer cursor. And we're going to set a slight border radius of 0.2 EM. And if we save and refresh, you can see that it gives us a nice little rounding, which I think looks pretty good. Now, obviously, we want to make sure we have some hover states for this. So inside, we're going to have our button with a hover state, and we're going to have a button with our focus state. We're going to make them both exactly the same. And all we're going to do is change this background color slightly. We're going to use the same hue, and we're going to use the same saturation. We're just going to bump down that lightness a little bit to give us a darker color. And as you can see, if I refresh and hover, we're going to get a nice little bit darker color. Now one other thing to do instead of our button is I'm just going to change our color. Let's just make this a 333 for example. And now if we refresh, you can see we have our color showing up exactly like we want it to. And these buttons are pretty much completely done. And now when we click one, we'll get brought to the single player page or the multiplayer page, which doesn't currently exist. So now the last step is going to be this giant battleship image here. We need to scale this down and make it look correct. So let's come up here a little ways and we're going to say dot splash. And let's see what this class is. Splash battleship image. So battleship image. Now with this, I essentially want to place this in the bottom of our page. So we're going to use position absolute to do that. So we'll say position absolute. And I'm going to set the bottom here to 5VH. And that's going to essentially place it 5% of the screen height away from the bottom, which is pretty much exactly where we want it to be. Next, I'm going to set the right to zero. If we refresh over here, you can see the right end of our battleship is on the very right hand side, which is exactly what I want. And we're going to set the left to 20 VW. And what this is going to do is it's going to push our left side so it's 20 VW away. And we don't even need this right at all. We can actually get rid of that right completely. And now I want to change our width to be 100%. And now if I save, you should drastically shrink down the size of our ship, which looks pretty good. You can see it's 20 VW moved over to the right. So it's hanging off the edge a little bit, but that's okay. Now the next thing to do is going to be transform. We just want to rotate this ship in the y direction, 180 degrees, and that's just because right now the ship is backwards. So if we refresh, you can see it's now pointing in the correct direction. And lastly, since I want this to be kind of a watermark in the background, I'm going to turn off pointer events on it so that we can't actually click on it. And I'm going to change the opacity here to 0.25 to really make it blend into the background a little more, as you can see. And now as we scale up or down the size of our page, you can see that that battleship actual ship increases and decreases in size, which looks pretty good. But one problem is it's messing up the spacing of the rest of the content on our page. As you can see, this battleship section is messed up. 
we just give the page a quick refresh though, it should fix that issue. And now we essentially have our splash page completely done and we can begin work on the rest of our page. Let's just close out of Google Fonts here since we're done with our fonts. So the first thing I wanna work on is our single player version since I think that'll be easier to work on first as opposed to multiplayer. So if we open up single player, you can see that we have all of our code over here. And one thing we don't need is we do not need socket IO at all when we're doing single player. So we can completely remove socket IO from this page, which is great. Now the next thing that we can do is remove these buttons. We can also remove all this stuff about player one and player two, because obviously we're only having one individual player. Now, before we get too carried away about changing this HTML, one thing that we need to do is actually change our JavaScript a little bit because we're now doing a single player game and we're handling that based on our URL. So we need to pass in a variable to our page that we can actually use to denote if we're on single player. So we can just say let game mode equal one player. And that's because inside of our code, we're using this game mode variable and depending on if it's set to one player or two player is determining if we're multiplayer or not. So now if we go in our app.js and we just search for game mode, you can see here, we don't need to define this anymore since we're defining it in our single player file. And where we're actually setting our game mode, we no longer actually need to set our game mode. So here we're checking for single player. So actually let me make sure I change this in here to be single player instead of one player. Let's just keep searching for where we actually set it. As you can see here, when we start multiplayer, we're setting the game mode to multiplayer. We don't actually need to worry about that. So let's just close that out. And then let's go down to game mode a little bit and where we're setting to single player. We don't need that at all. And I think that's all the places we're actually setting it. Yep. So now what we need to do is those functions of start single player and start multiplayer. All we need to do is here, check if game mode equals single player, then we want to start the single player game. So we'll call that function start single player. Else, if it doesn't equal that, we're gonna call the start multiplayer function. And essentially what we're doing here is instead of clicking a button to determine whether or not we start or stop the multiplayer, we're actually determining it based on this variable we set inside of here. So now we can remove this single player and multiplayer button selector because those don't exist anymore. We can click save and hopefully when we load up single player and inspect, we shouldn't have any errors in the console. And it looks like we do have an error. Reference error cannot access ship array before initialization. So let's figure out what that problem is. We'll search for ship array. And as you can see, we're using this ship array instead of start single player. Let's just go down a little ways to see where else it's used. And you can see it's actually defined all the way down here. So let's take this definition of our ships. We're actually gonna get that comment too. So let's just get all of that. And we're just gonna move this all the way up before we actually have this single player function. So just put it right there. And now if we come over here, refresh, we shouldn't have that error, but we still do. And the reason for that is actually because we need to move this above where we call the start single player function, obviously. So we're just gonna go all the way up till we find start single player up here. And we're gonna define our ships up here before we actually call that single player function so it'll have access to it. And now if we refresh our page and we inspect, check the console, we should have no more errors. And of course we do have an error, cannot read class list of undefined. So let's just see, this is on line 188. You can see that it's when it's trying to set up the computer squares, seeing if it is taken or not. And let's just see what function that's in. That's inside this generate function. So we'll search for generate. As you can see, it's being called right here with our ship array. And let's just go further a little bit. Now we're inside that generate function and let's see exactly what the problem is. We remember the error says cannot read property class list of undefined. So somewhere in here, we're accessing class list on that line 188 which is happening here where we set is taken. So it's trying to get the class list here and we're seeing if it contains taken. So this is an error because computer squares random start is not being set properly. So let's do a quick search to see where this computer squares variable is being used. Okay, let's go a little further. We see it's being defined here as an empty array. That makes sense. We can see here we're just looping through it. That's fine. And here we're calling create board of the computer squares. So this is actually setting up a brand new board. So we need to make sure we create our boards before we actually try to generate ships. So let's copy this create board code. We're gonna put this way up here, all the way at the top, right before we start our single player match. So we'll just say here, create our board. And now if we refresh and we inspect, you can see that we now no longer have any errors. This is all great, but if we look over here, it looks like there's something wrong with the creation of our board. If we refresh a few times, you can see things just aren't quite lining up like we would expect. 
And the reason for this misalignment is actually just because of our screen size, it's a little bit too small. Once we get to this screen size where we have two perfect squares, as you can see here, we now have our ships being lined up like I expect. So now with that done, we essentially have all of the JavaScript changes that we need to get started with styling this page. So let's jump back over to the HTML finally and get to work on changing some of our styles up. The first thing I wanna do is handle the styles for this container section here. Instead of using this generic class grid, I'm just gonna use the class battleship grid just to make it a little bit easierly named. And we're gonna have grid user. And again, I'm gonna use battleship grid here instead of the grid class and grid computer to distinguish which one is which. And I just want to get started with styling this before we move on to anything else. So if we save refresh, you're going to notice things don't quite work because, you know, battleship grid is not the same as grid. So we need to change around some of our styles inside of here. So let's just go down a little ways. And the very first thing that I want to do inside of here is I want to change our container, whoops, container styles. Right now we have it set to display flex, which is fine. But I also want to change justify content to center and the width to 100%. So we can get rid of this duplicate style down here. Now, if I save, you'll notice it really doesn't change much other than center our two squares, which is fine for now. The next thing I wanna do is style our battleship grid. And this styling is hopefully gonna help us solve that issue where we have you know rectangles here instead of squares. So let's just bring this back a little bit. So inside of our battleship grid, I wanna specify some spacing of margin to v min so that we have at least a little bit of spacing between all of our different elements and the edges of our board. And I also want to change the display here to be grid. Next, I want to change the background color of both of these to be kind of like a watercolor. So we're going to use 200, 100%, and 50%. That's going to give us a nice little watery color. And if we come down here and just get rid of these background colors on grid user and grid computer and save and refresh, you'll see we get that nice water looking color. Now the next thing I want to do is set up our rows and columns. So we'll say grid template rows. We're going to repeat 10 times. And we want this to be 4.6 V min. And this is essentially a little bit of math. We essentially say we want 46 V min to be the width of our container. So 46 V min with our two margin, it's essentially going to add up to be 100% of our screen size, which is exactly what we want. Our columns are going to be exactly the same since we want this to be a square. And now instead of our grid user and our grid computer, we can essentially just remove all of these styles. So grid user, just gonna get rid of that. Grid computer, we're gonna get rid of that. And here, this grid div, this is just each div inside of our grid. Grid. So we're gonna say battleship grid. Instead of specifying our width and height, we already have that done with our grid template columns and rows. All we need to do here is change our border to be a one pixel solid HSLA. And this is just gonna be zero, zero percent, 100 percent, so essentially white. And we want it to be mostly a opaque so that it's going to see through and if we refresh you can see we now have these nice little grid lines and you'll also notice that our grids fill to be the entire size of our screen and no matter what size our screen is you'll see that they'll shrink down or grow as needed and then if it becomes too large they'll just stay centered on our screen just like this so that essentially is going to take care of that weird rectangle problem with the wrapping that we had before and it also gives us a nice little grid to work with so when we place our elements in the grid it's much easier to see where we're placing them now the next step to work on is actually styling out our different ships because they don't really look like ships. I'm going to be honest, these look like different colored rectangles and I want these to actually look like ships. And in order to do that, we can do this by creating custom styles for all of the different classes that are being applied here. If we just inspect this real quick, you'll see everything that has a ship in it has a class of Taken as well as the name of the ship. So like Taken Destroyer. If we inspect here, you'll see that this says Taken Cruiser. So we know exactly which elements inside of our grid are actually taken and we can specify different CSS classes by saying that we want to select taken, whoops, dot taken. And inside of here, we can set specific styles such as a background color. And we can make this background color HSL 0, 0%, 0 and 80%. This is gonna give us a you know grayish color. And if we save and refresh, you'll notice none of our ships actually change color. And the reason for that is down here, we have specific colors for all of our different ships, destroyer container, destroyer container vertical, and so on. They all have specific background colors. So all we need to do for now is just remove these background colors for all of these different ships. We can leave those ones because those are going to be for other things. Just get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, 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 that. And actually we do need to get rid of these down here. So I'm just gonna completely remove these classes. There we go. And now you'll notice if we save and refresh, 
we're going to see all of our ships are invisible. And the reason for that is our ships down in this your go section have a class of dot ship. So we need to make sure dot taken and dot ship both have those gray styles. And now you can see we have our gray ships, which we can drag around wherever we want inside of our grid. We can even rotate them and everything is working as we would expect. Now, the next thing that I want to work on is going to be for this down here, our grid display section, because right now it's pretty empty. Even when we refresh, it has our elements in it, but it, you know, it doesn't have a background color anymore. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I really want to work on this section here. So one thing that we're going to do is first wrap it inside of the container. This is just going to allow us to center everything. So wrap it into container. I'm going to put this div all the way at the bottom. Indent everything. If we close that off, close that off. There we go. Now when we refresh, we see that that's centered our elements, which is exactly what we want. Now the next thing to do is actually put our styles in here for that grid display. Right now we have some styles here for it, but I'm just going to remove those styles. We don't actually need those because we're going to use our own styles. So we can just say got grid display. I just want to change this to be a display of flex because this is actually not even going to really be a grid. This is going to be our own set of elements that are just side by side like this. We can rotate and as you can see, we can select our different ships. You'll notice the size of these ships don't scale properly because as our grid increases in size or decreases in size, you can see our ships stay the same. So they look really big or if our screen size is really large, they look kind of smaller than they should. So the next step is going to be to make sure our width and height of our ships down here match our grid up here. And that's actually pretty straightforward to do. As you can see, these are set to hard coded widths and heights of 80, 40, and 10 for a margin, for example. And we want to make this dynamic based on our 4.6 V min up here. So to do this, all we need to do is select our ship. So we can say dot ship. And we want to get the divs inside of our ship. And we're just going to set the width to 4.6 V min. And we're going to set the height to 4.6 V min. And what that's going to do is it's going to make each div inside of our ship match up to the size of our actual grid. As you can see, it matches up there fairly closely. And now to make it match up 100%, we need to style each one of our ships. So we can say dot ship. And this is the container for our ships. As you can see here, this destroyer has a width of 40 and height of 80. So what we can do is we can essentially encode this into CSS variables. So first, all I want to do is get a display of flex on all of our different ships. I want to have a flex wrap, which is just going to be wrapping a margin of one V min, just so it scales like everything else on our page. And then our width is going to be here, a calculation that takes 4.6 V min, which is the default size of one square, essentially one unit in our battleship game. We're going to multiply that by a variable called width, which is just going to default to one. And we're going to do the exact same thing for height. And that height variable here is just going to default to one. And then lastly, we're just going to set a border radius, whoops, border radius, which is 2.3 V min, just so that we have a little bit of rounding on our ships. And now, for example, our destroyer here, we can just come in here and say that our width is going to be set, I'm sorry, dash dash width, since this is our custom variable, we know that the width here is going to be two, and we know the height is going to be one, and since it defaults to one, we don't even need to specify it. And now, for our vertical one here, our width is one, that's the default, and our height, which is just dash dash height, is going to be equal to two, because it's essentially, everything is 40 pixels, so 120 would be a width of three, 40 is a width of one here, so there we go, we have our height and our width for our destroyer. And if I save and refresh, you can see that our destroyer section is now perfectly sized to fit inside of our grid exactly as we would want it to. The last thing I want to do is just go through and specify the width and height for all of these. So this is going to be a width of three. Height is going to be default. Here we have a height, which is going to be three. So we set our height to three, get rid of all of this. And this is just going to drastically clean up our code. Here we have a width of three. And we have here a height of three. So three and three, we can actually just take this cruiser vertical since it has the exact same parameters as our submarine, move it there. Same with our cruiser container, same exact styles as our submarine. And that again, will just simplify our CSS even further. And here we have a width of four and finally a height of four, just like that. And again, we've drastically cleaned up this code. Oh, I'm sorry. One more Width one has here a width of five. So let's do that and a height of five. There we go. And we can get rid of this ship div down here because we've already taken care of that. And we have essentially cleaned up our code a ton. Now, if we just save this, 
refresh over here, you should see nothing really changes, which is exactly what we want. And our ships essentially fit perfectly in our grid. As you can see, they're going in exactly where I would want them to. And it looks exactly like I want. I can even rotate. And you'll notice we have a problem when we rotate. And this problem is unfortunate. The fact that if we scroll down here a little ways, our height here and our width are being combined together. So this destroyer container ha also has the classic destroyer container vertical. So our width two and height two are being specified here. So we actually need to put a width of one on each one of these that has a height, just to make sure we don't get any of that extra overlap. Now, if we save, refresh and rotate, you should see they all have the exact size that they should and everything is being exactly like we want it to. Now, the next step I wanna work on is this text here in the middle. So if we just go into our single player, we can take this hidden information and I just wanna make this also a container to center everything. And I also wanna make these buttons here hide when we start our game. So we're gonna put them inside of a div called setup buttons. And we're just gonna put our two buttons for starting and rotating our ships inside of there because we don't need to see these after the game starts. So now if I save refresh, you can see that centers our text for us. But obviously these doesn't look quite right. So the next thing that we need to do is actually to make this so that it looks correct. So on our buttons, let's add a class, which is equal to button. That's going to essentially add our button styles to these classes. And immediately you'll see that makes a little bit of difference. And here we're also gonna apply a class to this called info text so that we can style these two different text elements as well. And we'll just paste that down here for info text and you'll refresh and that won't really change anything because we don't have these styles set up yet. So let's scroll down here below our current code and we're gonna have our hidden info. And for here, what I wanna do is I wanna change our font size to be 1.5 REM. And if I refresh, you'll see it increases the font, but it doesn't increase the font of our buttons. So inside of our button, if I scroll all the way up, let's change our font size to inherit. And now if I save that, it should increase the font size of our buttons. That's exactly what we want. Now all the way back down here, we want to align our items in the center. And we want to change our flex direction to column so everything stacks vertically. So now if we refresh, you can see it stacks vertically and everything looks exactly like we want it to. And the next thing to do is change our info text. I just want to add a little bit of margin between our info text, just like that. Give us a little bit more spacing between our different text elements. And that is pretty much everything for our different text styles. Now, the next thing that I want to work on is going to be one of the more tricky elements of this game. And that's that when we have a ship on here, I want the ends to be curved just like they are down here. And I want them to be curved properly based on the actual rotation of the ship. So this top piece would be curved, this bottom piece would be curved, and here this left piece would be curved, and this right piece would be curved. Now, in order to handle that, we can't do it in just CSS. We actually need to apply JavaScript classes to the very first element inside of our ships and the last element in our ships. We also need to specify whether it's a vertical ship or a horizontal ship, because that changes how we actually do our border radiuses to make those curved edges. So let's go back into our app.js. And what we need to do inside of our app.js is we need to find the code for when we actually finish our drag and drop. So if we just search for something like drag drop, you'll see that we have a function called drag drop. And if we go to this function here, inside of here is where we're actually dropping the ship onto the board. And you can see there's essentially two if statements here. There's this if horizontal, then we place it. Else, if it's not horizontal, then we place it. And what we need to do is we need to add some classes to our ship depending on if it is a horizontal or vertical ship. We also need to add classes to determine if it's the start or the end of our ship to give us those rounded corners. So here, one great thing that we can do is since we know that it's horizontal inside this for loop, we can just add a class here of horizontal. And that way we know all of our horizontal ships will have that class. And down here in the vertical section, we can just add the class vertical. Now immediately, if I just refresh, drag this in, and I drag in a vertical one, whoops, drag in a vertical one, if I inspect this, you can see now we have the class vertical on these squares. And if I click over here, you can see we have the class horizontal on these squares. So that's working as expected. Now the next thing to do is I wanna determine if we're at the start or the end. So we're gonna just say let direction class, and this is just gonna be empty. It's because if we have i here, which is our iterator, if i, is equal to zero. That means it's our very first element. So our direction class is going to be equal to start. And then we're going to have another if here just to check if it's our last element. So if I is equal to dragged ship length, this is essentially the length of our ships. We just subtract one from that. That's going to give us our last I element, which means it's the last element in the array. 
So we can say direction class is going to be equal to end. And now we can add that direction class onto our class list. And if I just make sure to copy this exact code, and I put this inside the horizontal section as well up here, and I make sure I add this direction class onto our ship class, save it, and I refresh over here. You can now see if I drag one of these on, we're getting an error, especially because I spelled direction class wrong. There we go. Refresh, drag one on, rotate, and drag another one on. Now if we inspect here, you can see that if we click on this first element here, we get taken, vertical, and start being added. And if we click here, taken, horizontal, start, and then taken, horizontal, end. And of course, down here, we have taken, vertical, end. So now we correctly are determining the orientation of our ship, as well as which elements are the start and the end. And with that information inside of our CSS, we can finally add rounded corners to our ships. It's a lot of work just to add rounded corners. So let's just scroll up here quite a ways until we get to this taken section here, because all we're gonna be doing is selecting taken, and we wanna get anything that's at the start, and that is also vertical. And we're gonna set the border radius here, to be 50%, but we only want the border radius on the top left and the border radius on the top right to have that 50%. Now let's do essentially the exact same thing, but for the end, and this is gonna be the bottom left and the bottom right that we want to be rounded. So if we refresh here and just put a vertical ship on here, you'll notice our rounded corners stay, but of course our horizontal ones don't have that same rounding. So let's do the exact same thing but we want to just copy this down and say taken and instead of having or vertical here we'll have horizontal and we'll do the exact same thing down here and instead of being top left and top right if we're at the start of our horizontal we want this to be our top left and our bottom left and down here we want to have our top right and our bottom right so now if i save refresh drag a ship on you see that works and we drag a vertical one, and you still see that we have these nice rounded corners. Now you notice we don't have these rounded corners on the computer side, and that's okay because we actually just want to hide these different computer shapes. We don't actually want to show them to the user. So to do that, we can just come up here where we have battleship grid, and we can just say grid computer, I believe is the class that we gave it. And all we wanna do is select the different taken elements inside of that, and we're just gonna change the background color and we want to set it equal to the background color of our actual grid. So we'll just put that right there. And we're going to get rid of the border radius. So we'll say border radius is zero, and we're going to make sure that always overrides. So we're going to set that to important. We'll do the same thing with the background color here. We just always want this to override. Now for refresh, you can see we can't actually see which elements on the right hand side are the actual elements of the computer. Now the next thing that I want to do is going to be something kind of fun and add a little bit of animation to our page. So right now we have our ships on here, you know, they look all right, but they don't really look like they're moving. They don't look like they're in water. I want to add some cool animation. So in order to do that, I want to give like a ripple effect to our ship. And an easy way to do that is to use the before element. So what we can do is just scroll down here all the way to the bottom of this taken section. We can just say taken. And we want to get the before elements inside of these taken. And we're just going to get this for both vertical. And we're also going to get this here for the horizontal. So we'll say taken dot horizontal. And we want to get the before element. And inside of here, we're essentially going to set up a ripple effect. So an easy way to do that is obviously set the content to blank so that we have our element actually rendering. And I want to make sure I spell horizontal correct. There we go. Next thing I want to do is position absolute. And I want to make sure that we have a border on this. And we're going to use a 0.3 vmin again, just so this actually scales with our actual rendering of our grids. And we're going to make it a solid white border. And I'm going to set here the top to negative one pixel, the bottom to negative one pixel, the left to negative one pixel, and lastly, the right to negative one pixel. And that's just going to kind of inset our border just a little bit. And in order to use position absolute, we need to make sure our taken elements are actually position relative. So let's just come inside of here and set this to be position relative. So now if I refresh and I drag one of these up, you'll see we have our white grid all the way around exactly like we want but I mean, obviously it doesn't look like we want it to look. So let's make some further changes. The first thing that I wanna do is on all of our different horizontal elements. So taken dot horizontal before, I wanna take the border on the left and I wanna get rid of it. So we'll say border left none. 
and obviously the border on the right, I also want to get rid of. And we'll do the same thing for vertical. So I'll say vertical here, but instead of border left and border right, we're gonna do border top and border bottom. That way we don't have these lines in between here. And now if I just refresh, drag one of our ships on, you'll see that they properly only have this border on the sides of the ship, which is where you would expect the ripples to come from. Now also, I wanna make sure that these borders actually wrap properly. So what we can do is up in here, we have taken end horizontal. We can just also say taken dot end dot horizontal, and we can get the before element and apply the same exact border radius. So for all of these, I essentially just wanna copy this, paste it down, and I wanna make sure we have the before element selected. This is just gonna give us that nice border effect on our ripples as well as on our ship. So we'll say, before here, and we'll do it lastly all the way up here. Before. Now if I refresh and I drag a ship on, you'll see that white border follows all the way around, which is exactly what I want, and it looks really cool. But it doesn't really look like ripples yet, so let's add that animation in. So we'll come in here and say animation. This is going to be on our horizontal ship, and we're going to call this ripples y for three seconds, linear and infinite. So essentially this is just gonna be an animation that takes three seconds and it loops through infinite amounts of time. And we can do the exact same thing down here, but with an animation called Ripples X because our vertical and horizontal grid are gonna have a different animation played because they're gonna be going out horizontally or vertically. So let's create our keyframes. We'll just do Ripples X first. And inside of here, we're gonna have a 0% and we're gonna have a 100%. And this is actually gonna be a fairly simple animation. All I wanna do is take the opacity and I wanna go from one all the way down to zero. And if we just save that and refresh and I bring in a ship that has the correct orientation, you'll see that it kind of pulses in and out, which is all right for now. But the next thing I wanna do is actually make the wave grow away from the ship. So it kind of looks like it's in the water. An easy way to do that is if we scale in the X direction, whoops, transform, and scale in the x direction and i start at one and i just scale this up slightly so we're going to go up to 1.5 and now i refresh it'll make it look like the wave is actually moving away from the ship as you can see like that and then it's going to do it again and again so you kind of get this nice effect like the boat is actually in the water and it's kind of moving water around it as it moves up and down in the waves we can do the exact same thing for our ripples y we're just going to change our scale from x to be a scale of y now if I refresh, I can bring in a horizontal ship, I can bring in a vertical ship, I can bring in another vertical ship, rotate this, bring in a horizontal ship, and unfortunately it looks like our horizontal ships are not working properly. That's just because this should be called ripples Y, not ripples X. And now if I refresh this, bring in a horizontal ship, it's working properly. We'll bring in another one, we'll bring in some vertical ships, and now we all of these different ships have nice ripple effects going around them. They're all independent from one another, and it looks really cool. So now our next step is going to be moving on and putting the finishing touches on our application, because right now, if we were to start our game and we actually click on a square, you can see it's just changing this color kind of randomly, and it's not exactly what we want it to be. We want it to look a lot cooler than just a big square changing the color of everything. And normally if you play Battleship, you kind of have these nice little round pegs that you use to determine where you've actually hit or missed. We're going to incorporate that with different colored pegs to determine where we hit and where we missed. And of course, we're going to add in some cool animations. So the first thing to do is here, you see we have the class of boom that indicates a hit and miss indicates that we actually missed what we were trying to hit. So I want to take these boom and miss classes, get rid of them for now. And I want to change them up to actually be the circular shaped pegs. So we're going to say dot boom. And we want to select the after element inside of here. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for miss and we're gonna select the after element. This after element is where we're gonna put that circle shaped peg. So let's put a content in here, which is just nothing. We're gonna have a position of absolute. We're gonna have a border radius, which is going to be 100%. That's gonna give us the circle shape. And we're gonna set the width to be two V min. And we're gonna do the same exact thing with the height so that we get a perfect circle. And then let's just add some color in. So we're gonna have miss after is gonna have a background color here of white and for boom we're going to do the exact same thing set the background color let's just set it to red now if we just refresh over here we'll just drag our ships onto the board start the game 
And if we click, you can see that we have a nice little circle, and here is a nice little circle. The computer's colors are incorrect, we'll fix that later, but as you can see, we're getting our circle peg showing up, but they're not in the actual center of our screen like we would expect. We expect it to be in the center of our grid. So in order to fix that, let's just select our miss, and we're gonna select our boom. This is actually the grid tile itself, and we're just gonna change the display to flex, and we're just gonna justify and align our items in the center. And that should hopefully put our pegs dead center. So let's just drag our ships on here again real quick. There we go, click start game, and we click. You can see we get our peg showing up directly dead centered exactly as we want. Now the next thing to do is to work on our animation. So let's just scroll down here a little ways after all these before and afters, and we'll just say dot miss before, and this is gonna be where our animation plays. We're gonna set the content to an empty string, position absolute, just like that. We're gonna have our animation, which we're just gonna call hit, for example. And we're just gonna say it's gonna be 0.2 seconds. We want it to be fairly quick. And we're gonna say ease out. So it gets slower as it gets further away towards the end. And it's going to essentially go in the forwards direction. So whatever the animation looks like at the end is what this miss is gonna look like. Now we wanna set in a border here. We're gonna use 0.1 V min solid white. And what this border is gonna do is when we hit, I essentially want like a shock wave of the hit impact to radiate outwards. So we're going to have this nice white border going around here. We're going to have a border radius of 100% to give us a circle. And let's just set the width to 2v min. And we're going to set the height to be the same, 2v min. Now we can actually specify our animation keyframes. So we'll say keyframes of hit. And this is just going to go from 0% all the way up to 100%. And all I want to do here is a very similar thing. Take our opacity from one all the way down to zero. And I want to take a scale. So we'll say transform scale from one, just a default starting position. Actually, I'm going to start this at zero. So it's not visible at the beginning. And we're going to go all the way up to a scale of four. So it's going to really radiate all the way outwards. And now if I save and refresh, drag on the ships, we should hopefully see animation every time that we have a miss. So if we start the game and click, you see we have that nice little outward radiation going outside of our white dots whenever we hit. Kind of a cool little animation. It's not super amazing, but I like it. And now we need to do the same thing for our boom. So what we're going to do is make this also a dot boom before. And all we need to do is specify our color separately. So we could say dot boom before here is going to have a border color of red and our dot miss before is going to have a border color of red. I'm sorry, white. And then up here, we can just say our border width is going to be 0.1 V min, and our border style is just going to be solid. Now we can get rid of this, save it, refresh, and we should get the exact same animation on the boom, but it'll be red instead of white. So let's click start game. We got the white animation, and you can see we got the red animation showing up over here when the computer actually hits. So we have all of those different animations working, and it looks pretty good so far. Now one of the last things I want to do for this single player version is to remove these buttons whenever we actually click start game. I no longer want these buttons to show up. So in our app.js, let's get a selector for those. We'll scroll all the way up to the top, and we'll just say const selector, or I'm sorry, setup buttons is equal to document dot get element by ID and we have an ID of setup buttons on that and now whenever we're actually going to start our game so let's just search for start so we have start single player and let's just see if we have any other start code in here for starting our game uh, here we go play single play game single this is what happens when we click the start button so all I want to do is when we click this button I want to call play single game, but I also want to hide our elements. So we'll say setup dot dis whoops dot style dot display is equal to none. So now if I refresh, drag all of our ships onto here so that we can actually start the game. And I click start game. You can see that obviously we have an error. So let's just inspect here. Go to the console. Cannot read property style of null, and it's on that line that we just created here. Looks like most likely this is because we don't actually have an ID on here. That is correct. So we'll say ID equals setup buttons. Now, if we refresh, we have that ID properly placed on there. So we should be able to actually delete those buttons from our page as soon as we click start game. 
And as you can see, those buttons disappear and we can play the game as we would expect. Now we also need to make sure that we do this on our multiplayer game as well. So we should have some code somewhere that's like play multiplayer maybe, or we'll just search for play game. Here we go, play game multi. Let's see where that's actually called from. Play game single, play game single, play game multi. Here we go. So we'll just put inside of here the code, which is going to say setup button style display none. So this will work for both multiplayer and single player games. So now the last thing to do is make sure the computer recognizes a hit versus a miss properly. So we'll just search for boom. I think that's the class that we should be specifying. So reveal square, enemy square. So this is when the player is actually hitting, or yeah, the current player is the user. Here we go. So the object that includes taken, add class boom. Otherwise, we're going to add the class of miss. That seems to be correct. So let's see where this reveal square function is being called. Okay, that's multiplayer. We don't want to worry about that. In the single player, we're essentially saying computer squares for each. When we click at the current player is the enemy, we're going to have this enemy go function. Let's take a look at enemy go. So all we're doing here is we're just automatically applying the class of boom to it no matter what. We're essentially saying if it doesn't have the class of boom, we're adding the class of boom. And what we want to do is we want to apply the class of hit or we want to apply the class of boom. So either miss or boom, depending on whether it hits or not. An easy way to do that is we can just say const miss is going to be equal to user squares of square. That's going to get us our current square. We want to get the class list and we want to see if it includes the taken class. If that's true, then it is actually a hit. So we'll change this to hit. So now here, what we can do is we can say, if it's a hit, we want to pass in boom. Otherwise, we want to pass in the class of miss. And now what we can do, hopefully, when we refresh and start the game, the computer should be properly targeting things as we expect. Get that in there, click start. And now when it hits over here, you'll notice nothing actually happens. Obviously, we have an error, so let's inspect and see what the error is. It says includes is not a function. And of course, that's because this should be contains, not includes, because we're dealing with class list. So now refresh that real quick, drag all these ships up one last time, hopefully start the game. And we see when the computer clicks over here, it was a hit. So let's try again. We'll do another click and you'll see that this one was a miss. And as you can see, it showed up white, which is exactly what we expect. You will notice a slight problem though, is that our ripple is now broken from our boom. And the reason for that is if we find our boom, we're changing around our before element, which is the same thing we use to put our actual ship on here and put the ripple on. So instead, let's change our boom animation to be something slightly different. We'll just say at keyframes for boom and at 0%, all I want to do is I want to set a background color to be red. And then at 100%, I want to change our background color here to be back to our ship background color. So if we just scroll up quite a ways until we find that, here it is. We can copy that down and we'll place it in right there. So now it should flash red and then go back to our ship background color. And this is actually not our ship background color. We don't have that opacity on there. This is just, I think 80%, I believe is our ship background color. Let me just search for this, see if that's correct. It is not. Let me scroll back up to try to find our ship. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go, yeah, 80%, I was right, okay. So back down here where we were, we have 80%, which is exactly what we expect. So it's gonna flash red and then go back to our ship's color. And inside of our boom, all we need to do up here is essentially in our boom before, dot boom before. We don't need any of this fancy code for this animation, for example. We don't need our border width or anything like that to be specified. So really what's gonna happen is our miss is gonna be combined up here so we can take our miss border color and put it back into here. So we can say border, 1v min solid white. We can just get rid of the boom before completely from here because this is only going to be for a miss. And then our boom before is going to have our border color. It's also going to have a content, which is like this, just an empty content. And really, that should be all we need. We actually don't even need this border color because we're not actually doing that ripple effect. And now if we save and refresh, drag in some ships, Start the game and hopefully if we find a hit, we should be able to test to see if this works. Might take a little bit to actually find what we're looking for. Still haven't found one yet. Very slow going. All right, we had a hit over here, but I didn't notice any actual change of color on the animation. And obviously that makes sense because 
inside of here, we're not actually specifying our animation. So we need to say, boom, we'll do 0.2 seconds, ease out, and we're going to do forwards. The exact same thing as we had up above. So now let's refresh, drag all of our ships in the screen. There we go. Click start game, and hopefully we'll get a hit pretty quickly. There we go, we had a hit, but it's obviously it doesn't really matter on the computer side. But on our side, we didn't actually see any animation of color change. And again, that makes sense because this shouldn't be our before element. Our ship is actually the one that is like the element on our page is our ship. Our ship has the color boom, not the actual before element. So now finally, if we refresh this, we should get that nice red color. So let's just drag all these on here. Click ground and hopefully our computer will actually hit a ship. We'll just click a few times until our computer finally hits a ship. It's taking its sweet time, unfortunately. Come on, computer. There we go. And you saw that we had a big red flash right on our ship, which is exactly what we want. Let's see if we can get it to happen again. Still nothing. Come on. Computer's not very good. There we go. Another big red flash, which is exactly what we want. Now, the next thing we need to work on is going to be our multiplayer section. So I'm just going to copy our single player section, change this to say multiplayer. And here, what we need to do is change our game mode to multiplayer. We also need to make sure we set up our script for socket.io. So we're going to say script source. This is going to be slash socket.io slash socket.io.js. That's our script for setting up our multiplayer. And then we also need to put our you know, player one, player two selection inside of here. So we're just going to have another container. This is going to be at the very top. And this container is going to contain all of our stuff for player one and player two. So we're going to have a div with a class of player and P1. And this is just going to say player one. And we're going to have a div in here with the class of connected. And this will have the text connected so we can determine if the player is connected. And we can also determine if the player is ready as well. And we're going to do the exact same thing for player two. So we'll say player two, player two, fix the indentation. And that's pretty much everything for this multiplayer section. So now if we just go back to our index page and we select multiplayer, we should see everything is pretty much exactly the same as before, but now we have this player one connected, player two connected, and then the ready and the ready. So we actually need to put styles on here to determine if they're properly connected or if they're ready and so on. So if we go into our style sheet, you can see there's already some styles set up for connected ready as well as the span for them. And we're not really using a span for this anymore. We're going to be using an active class to determine if they are active or not. So we can have our connected and our ready here. We'll put our font weight normal. Our opacity is going to be 0.25. And we're going to put our text decoration. Whoops, decoration. Oh, I cannot type today. Text decoration. And we'll put line through. And this is just going to give us this nice little strike through effect, essentially saying they don't look like they're connected yet. Also, to give us a little bit of spacing, we'll say dot player. We're going to set the margin here to be 2v min. And if we refresh, you can see we have a nice little bit of spacing, which is exactly what I want. Now, the next thing to do is we're going to have our active section. So let's just say dot connected, dot active, and the exact same thing, but dot ready, dot active. And all I want to do in here is change our opacity up to one. And we're going to get rid of our text decoration. So we'll say none. Now, if we refresh and we actually, you know, draw everything onto here, you'll notice that nothing's actually happening. Even when we click start game that we're ready, you'll see it, there's nothing, nothing showing up. It's not actually changing our styles. So we need to change our JavaScript to do that. So if we just search in here for maybe ready and we see on enemy ready, we have that being said to true setup buttons. Okay. Okay. Let's just search some further player ready. Let's search for this to see what that function does. So here we're actually doing our query selector and changing this span to have a class of green. This is where we want to specify that class of red. So we're going to get rid of the span because we just want to select dot ready and we want to toggle the active class. So now if we just come in here and drag all of our ships on the board and click start game, you'll see that it now shows that player one is ready. We don't have our player one being connected yet. So let's search for connected. There we go, player connected or disconnected. Let's search for that function. Here we go. And inside of here, we want to get our connected. And instead of toggling our class of green, we're going to toggle this class of active. Now, if we just refresh this page over here, you can see that it's showing that we are connected. And when we drag all of our ships on here, you can see when we click start game, that it's saying that player one is ready. And if I just copy this URL over and go to it, you can see we're now player two, we're connected. 
And if we drag all of our ships onto here and click start game, you can see that everyone's ready. And now it's my turn over here, so I can click. You can see I got a hit. And if I come over to here, you can see that hit has registered. And now I can go over here. You can see I got a hit. And you can see that hit has registered. You will notice a slight bug though, where our background color is showing through. We obviously don't want that. So in our styles, scroll all the way up. We have that class of computer grid here, grid computer for taken. We just want to do the exact same thing for grid computer. And we want this to be anything that has the dot boom class. We also want to make sure this background color is staying as this blue color. Now, if we refresh, I just drag everything on for both of these different players. I do the exact same thing over here. Click start game. And over here, click start game. And I click. And if I just make sure I hit an actual ship, let's see. There we go. You can see that that background color is no longer showing through, which is exactly what we want. We don't want that color to show through. You'll also notice these buttons down here are not disappearing as they should. So we're just going to search for this play game multi. And we're just going to copy this into the actual play game multi function and that should fix everything for us so now if we just refresh for hopefully the final time drag all the ships onto here click start game they went away do the same thing on here click start game and you can see those buttons have disappeared from both of these different screens and that's all it takes to create this battleship game if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out the parts by ania and jesse i'm having linked over here and subscribe to their channels and my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.